A Gretsch with P90s and a wrap tail? This is the Gretsch G5210 P90 Electromatic Jet. And, well, this looks interesting. As far as I know, Gretsch models with factory P90s is a fairly recent thing. Now, other than modded guitars like Eddie Cochran's famous 6120 with the Gibson P90 in the neck position, well, the single coils found on vintage models were typically the dearmond units, which you still see on vintage correct single coil Gretsch models. If you're a Gretsch fan, you probably know the vintage jet models that are referred to as solid bodies were actually chambered to the point they were more hollow than not. I owned a 60s silver jet, and it was definitely the case with that guitar. Now, I have no idea if these affordable electromatic jets are chambered to the same extent, but in any case, I'm very happy they retain that important part of the design, rather than just being another fully solid maple and mahogany guitar. And P90s on Gretsch's chambered jet models sounded like an interesting combination. This model is available in both a Bigsby equipped version or with this adjustable wrap tail. Now Bigsby's are popular and always look right on a Gretsch, but to be honest, I don't really enjoy using them all that much. So for this review, I've opted for the simplicity and tuning stability of the wrap tail. Now this body is mahogany with a maple top, and this finish is called Broadway Jade, which I like quite a bit. Now the neck is a fairly thin U-shape, the fingerboard is laurel with a 12 inch or 305 millimeter radius, and a 24.6 inch or 625 millimeter scale length. And it has the cool classic thumbnail inlays. Well, they're 22 medium jumbo frets and a synthetic bone nut. Now, there's a volume control for each pickup and a master tone and a master volume with a treble bleed circuit. So you should be able to control the overall output with the master without drastically changing the tone you've dialed in with the three regular controls.
Now, of course, with guitars at this price point, we don't always expect perfection, but the fit and finish is really quite good, and the fretwork is decent enough to allow for an easy setup. Plus, I have to say, with P90s and a rap tail bridge, you know, this makes a pretty decent blues machine, something not often associated with Gretsch. So while it would benefit from some truly excellent fretwork, overall I like it, especially given its fairly modest price of $600 US. Well, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you again very soon.